Okay, in the previous sections of this video, we've had a look at three different elements. We've had a brief introduction to the slider. We've had a look in the box of what we get when we buy the actual S1A1 slider. And we've also shown you how to install the engine to the slider in order to make it work. What we need to do now is learn how to use the remote controller. And in this section, I will teach you how to use the many different modes on the S1A1 wireless remote controller. So now I'm gonna to introduce to you the remote wireless controller. As you can see, we are gonna have a little look at some of the external buttons located on the controller. As you can see we here, we have two toggle wheels, one, two, or a left and a right rocker. These rotate 360 degrees, as I have just shown. If I turn the remote up this way, we will see three adjustable wheels. One, two, three. These wheels are used to adjust the speeds of the slider. You can also see an on-off switch here and a USB connection here. The USB connection is used both to charge the, the remote control and also update the firmware. Simply plug the USB in to any PC or laptop to charge it and on one single charge the remote will last for up to 48 hours. The same with the firmware. Simply connect the firmware data cable and up, put it into any PC or laptop to update the firmware for the remote controller. There is also a connection for the tripod which I'm going to show you now. And it is located here. This is a tripod connection which allows the remote controller to stand on a tripod independently. Okay. So we have turned on our wireless remote controller. We are presented here with six options. We have manual, auto, record, lapse, shutter, and the set menu. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the set menu so we can set the settings of the slider. Simply move across the menu by going like this, from left to right, or right to left, and up and down. This helps us to move around the menu with ease. So now we are on the set menu. By simply pressing this button down here, we are now in the set menu. What we need to do here is first set the distance of the slider. The default distance of the slider is 1050 millimeters. So let's set the distance. Simply push down on this button here and move the distance by pushing this button to the left or the right. So you can see our speed is on the left which is 79 millimeters per second and our distance is on the right which will be the default distance here. So now we've set the distance of the slider. Then hit this button here to save the distance. So now our distance is saved and we can get back out of this menu by simply pressing this button here. So as you can see, our distance is now saved. The next option we have, if we go down, sorry, this button here, is power used. Currently we are using 25% power, but we can increase that to up to 100%. We can also stop it at 50 and 75. The more power used, the heavier load can be taken. So for example, if we are using 100% power, we can take a five to eight kilogram camera, and we can also pan vertically by still being able to lift the camera up by using 100% power. If we go down, you can see our backlight, which at the moment is 30 seconds, but this can go up to five minutes, one minute, and back down to 30 seconds. If we go down again, you can see the language we have is English, but there is also a range of other languages. And then if we go down again, we can reset the system to the default setting. And also we can have a look at what version of the firmware we are using by simply going down and clicking on the button here. 
At the moment you can see we're using version 1.3 and we are using the slide version 1.3 also. To get out of this menu and back to the main menu, simply hit this button here. We are now back in the main menu. Okay, so now that we've set our settings, we need to do one more important thing. We need to make sure the sync setting is correct and the frequency is the same as the remote, con the wireless shutter controller and also the engine, the motor section. So if we hold down this button here, you will see we come to the sync setting page. Simply make sure that all the buttons are up, facing in the same direction. Adjust them by going across like this and down like this. So make sure all your buttons here, frequency buttons, are the same as your wireless shutter controller and also your motor section. So up, down, across, up, down. So when you have everything done and everything is in the same position, you can select the save button by simply pressing here and then here. So now your sync setting is the same as your wireless shutter controller and also as your motor section. Okay. So now we have our sync setting done, we can have a look at manual mode. Manual mode is the most easiest mode to use on the slider. Basically we go in here, we have our speed here which is adjusted by this wheel. So you can see here's our speed. So we will set our speed at maximum which is 160 by adjusting the wheel like so and then our distance which is over here on the right hand side. So you can see our distance is 1039.6 millimeters and our speed is 160. So bring the speed down by using this button here and then the distance back by simply using this button here to go from left to right. So there you can see manual mode. These buttons down here, this one here indicates that the frequency is working, that the connection is working, you have a reception, and this button here is the battery. So just keep an eye on them to make sure they're both there. If you have an X, you need to check your sync setting to make sure that your frequencies are all in the same direction. And if your battery is low, you need to charge your battery. So simply go back to the main menu by clicking here, and we are back in the main menu. Okay, so now we're familiar with manual mode, we're familiar with the settings, and we're also familiar with how to work the sync settings of the remote controller. Now we can briefly look at the record mode over here on the right hand side. So simply go over to record mode, select this button here to select it, and this is where we store all of our traces. So basically we can have up to nine traces, you can see, nine different traces, and if we want to override a trace, we simply just enter in new data. So let's start on trace one. Okay, so now we're on trace one. If we go back up to the round circle here and click this button here, now we can adjust the speed and the distance. So we can adjust our speed here like this. So let's give ourselves a speed of 50 millimeters. And now our distance is adjusted by this rocker here on the left. So we're gonna go to the right hand side and we're going to give our distance of maybe just over 500. Okay, so now we have a distance of 537.2 millimeters. Simply click this button here and your trace has been saved. So you can see we have a distance of 537.2 and 31.9 seconds. So if we go back out of this menu and we go into auto here and we select auto, you can see we have a trace of 537 millimeters at 31.9 seconds, which is number one. There are three different modes in trace mode. There is AB, which is between two points, A and B. If we go, sorry, there is trace mode, which traces exactly the speed and distance that you entered in earlier. And then there is AB, A mode, which goes between A, B and back to A. Okay, so let's have a look at the lapse mode on the remote controller. Simply go down to the lapse mode here, select it here like this, and you will be presented with this screen. You have both a number mode and a time mode to choose from. So let's choose number mode. At the moment I've set 675 pictures, 
but that you can go up here to select more or you can go down here to select less so let's keep it at 675 so simply go to 675 and that is our quantity total of pictures if we go down here we can set the exposure again up and down so considering I'm shooting on AV mode I'm gonna leave my exposure at zero intervals the same up and down so let's leave our intervals at two seconds so if we go down again we can see now that I have selected this button here which says one beside it that is our record we set previously in our record section so now we're using record number one so if we go down we can see this ease in and ease out currently it's set to three pictures but you can choose more or you can choose less so let's choose three pictures the ease in function is exactly what it says it will go a little bit slower at the start and it will go a little bit slower at the end so we have an ease in of three and an ease out of three so if we go over to the right hand side here we can see preview so let's select the preview and we can see our frame rate which is 24 pictures and we can see our time which is 28.1 seconds that can be adjusted to up and down so we can go up to 60 and we can go down to 24 same again back out and then down here we see the total time it will take to do our laps which is 22.30 seconds so if we go down and we go over here this is our play button this next one here is our pause button this next one here will return the slider back to its original position quickly and the one after here is the quantity of pictures so if we go back over to the button here we can now select our play button to start our laps so simply click on the button to start the time lapse and our lapse has now started you can follow the progress of the lapse on the screen here as shown again looking at the lapse mode we go into lapse mode here and now we're going to select time mode as opposed to number mode so simply go into time mode here and choose the time you wish to use so again you use up and down so let's select a time of three hours and we can use the seconds here to go up and down so we have a time of three hours total for our laps we're using AV mode so we're going to leave the exposure at zero if you're using bulb mode on the camera you can adjust the exposure shutter speed to whatever you require and the same with your intervals up and down so let's leave the intervals at two seconds and again if we have a look here this is our record this button here this is our record of a trace that we recorded earlier so it's on number one at the moment and if we go down we can see our ease in and ease out function is there again so we will do the same as we did in number mode and select three and ease out again select three basically again go over to the preview button here to have a look at how many frames per second the frame rate and also the time rate again you adjust by going up and adjust by going down and you can see the time adjusts accordingly so go back out again back down into here that's our record here's our play button again here is our pause button here is to return quickly back to the start and if we go back up here we can see our time and exposure and our interval are set so again as in the number mode we go over to here we hit this button and our laps will start again you can follow the progress of your laps on the screen as shown okay so now let's have a look at the shutter mode so basically we go down to the shutter mode here we select it by hitting this button here and we can see we are presented with this screen first we have our quantity total which is the amount of pictures we want then we have our exposure or our shutter speed and we have our intervals so if we go back up by increasing the amount of photos you will see that the time increases also here by decreasing the amount of photos you will see that the time limit also decreases here and same if we change the exposure we go up the time goes up we go down and the time goes down same with the intervals so what we will do is we will set ourselves 43 pictures zero exposure as we're shooting on AV mode and an interval of one second then simply we go down to the play button here 
and we select play to start our shutter. You can follow the shutter progress on the screen here and it's also worth noting that this shutter can also operate when it's not on the slider. So if you wish like attaching your camera to a tripod, you can also control the eye footage shutter remotely by just using the remote control. Okay, so that concludes our video today. We've briefly had a look at the box, we've had a look at how to install the motor section, and we've also had a look at the remote controller as with the slider. At this moment, I would like to say thank you very much for watching the video, and if you wish to buy further products from the great iFootage range, please visit www.ifootagegear.com. Thank you very much, and thanks for watching.